Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. All the way in handcuffs, new video tonight of Michigan State and NBA star Draymond Green arrested after an assault at a bar in East Lansing. The FBI will tell you that LGBT people are more likely to be victimized than any other group. Tonight, how DPD, the Wayne County prosecutor and one nonprofit are trying to change it all. But first, chaos in the courtroom. Shot fired, one down, one down. An inmate breaks free, opens fire, killing two bailiffs and wounding two others. Our hearts are torn apart. They were our friends. Tonight, we're learning more about the people who were gunned down and the man who took their lives. And we are breaking new information since our last report at 6 o'clock, so let's get right to it. Tonight, we know that gunman shot four people, killing two of them. They were bailiffs. One has been identified as 61 year old Joseph Zangaro. He was the head of courthouse security. The other is 63 year old Ronald Kinzel. He's been with the court since 2005. And the deputy who was shot is 41 year old James Atterbury Jr. He's in the ICU. A woman was also shot, but her identity is not being revealed. Here is the man police say wrestled a gun away from a deputy, took hostages and killed those two bailiffs. He is 45 year old Larry Darnell Gordon from Coloma, Michigan, and he has a long criminal history. Our Priya man is live tonight in St. Joseph where it all happened. Priya, you've learned more about how this all went down. Well, the sheriff says that inmate Larry Gordon was being arraigned on felony charges here at Berrien County Courthouse. He was being taken into the courtroom when he managed to grab an officer's gun, shooting two bailiffs and shooting a deputy as well as a woman. He then managed to get into the courtroom where he took several people hostage before he was shot dead. In total, three killed, two injured in this afternoon shooting here at the Berrien County Courthouse. Well, our hearts are torn apart. They were our friends. They were my colleagues. I have known them for over 30 years. The Berrien County Sheriff says 45 year old Larry Gordon was being arraigned Monday on felony charges. Before entering the courtroom, Gordon grabbed an officer's gun, killing Joe Zangaro and 63 year old Ronald Kinzel. Zangaro was the head of courthouse security. Kinzel had served in the Army. After killing two and injuring two more, Gordon made his way into the courtroom. The sheriff says Gordon held people hostage for a few minutes before two bailiffs shot the inmate dead as he tried to escape. This thing hit home. I mean, that's my nephew. 41 year old deputy James Atterbury was shot three times. And he's a great guy. I know him since he was a baby. He is expected to recover and remains in intensive care. I'm thanking God that he's still alive. And I'm, I'm just so sorry for the victims. His family says Atterbury had worked nights at the Barron County Jail for 13 years. Today was his first day working at the courthouse. He worked in the jail for about 13 years, never had an incident. And to be uh, working at the courthouse, I even thought that was safer. As news of the tragedy spread, some attended prayer vigils to remember the victims. A men and women's God and bring us closer one to another. We've been grieving as a community and then to have in our own community today the shooting at the courthouse. Um, we had to get together and pray. We need to recognize that all of us are vulnerable for these kinds of problems. So then that means we should be closer, we should have better relationship, and we should learn how to work together to keep these kind of things from happening. It happened just after 2 p.m. This and Bishop Atterbury says his son is married, a father of five and a church elder. He spends a lot of time helping the youth in this community. He says tonight their family, their thoughts are with the families who lost loved ones. And as events were unfolding today, this courthouse was on lockdown. I understand the courthouse will remain closed tomorrow. Reporting live from St. Joseph, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Well, Priya, I know that a lot of gun holsters have a security feature on it that make it harder to get the gun out. Do we know how Larry Gordon was able to get that gun from the deputy? You know, I asked the sheriff that and he wouldn't comment on that, saying it's part of the investigation. But that's the big question here. How was this inmate able to grab the gun? Right now, investigators are reviewing security video to see exactly how that happened. The sheriff did say there were no warning signs before this deadly gunfire erupted.
All right, Priya, and our thoughts and prayers certainly with those victims this evening. Priya, thank you. And moments ago, our news partner, Wood TV, spoke with the shooter's ex-wife by telephone, and she says Larry Gordon was not a monster. All he wanted to do was get home to our baby girl and to me. Yeah. I just don't want the, the press to paint a picture of him as some... Um, angry, violent person. Nobody knows the truth because they weren't there. Well, she is asking for privacy for her and her family. Now, we've just updated our stories on clickondetroit.com with more information about the victims and interviews from family members. You'll find it all right there on our homepage. Get ready, heat, humidity, even a possibility for storms over the next few days. And Ben is here with the latest. I called it summer squared tonight. Oh, that it's makes sense. Just everything hitting us up. at the same time. Yeah, it's going to be tough. More of everything. And you're already feeling that humidity out there tonight. 70 degree temperatures, 76 right now at Metro. And even though the heat index not hot, much higher than the temperature right now over the next couple days, especially in the afternoons, we will notice that numbers outside a little bit warmer than what we were looking at yesterday at this time, about three to five degrees warmer and uh, on general, uh, just slightly cooler over the east side right now. So s temperatures uh, moving up pretty quickly as we get into tomorrow. We'll be at 84 at noon. We're going to 90 degrees. It's going to be our eighth 90 degree day of the season. We average usually only 11 for the entire year. We'll see how many more we've got in store in a few minutes. Kim. OK, Ben, we have new video of the night. Former Michigan State and current NBA basketball star Draymond Green was arrested in East Lansing. The video shows Green being taken away in handcuffs after allegedly assaulting a man at a bar. That man was not seriously hurt. When Green was booked for a misdemeanor assault, he was released on a $200 bond. Green has 10 days to turn himself in to face formal charges. Two carjackings on Detroit's west side and police believe the same robbers are responsible. The first happened early Friday morning at a Coney Island on West Davison. The robbers actually stalked the victim inside the restaurant and point a gun at him while he's still at the counter ordering food. He complies with their demands, walks outside, and surrenders his car. Then on Sunday afternoon, police say the same crew approached a driver outside of a party store on Livernois and forced him to surrender his SUV at gunpoint. No one was hurt in either case. There is a $4,000 reward for information leading to arrests. Detroit police are opening investigations into three different officers who posted inappropriate comments on social media after the shootings in Dallas. A female officer is being investigated for a post she made and a supervisor was reassigned and placed on restricted duty pending an internal investigation. Detective Nate Weekly is being investigated after he called the Black Lives Matter movement racist and terrorist on Facebook. Weekly was demoted down to officer but there are calls for him to be fired. What he did was make folks like myself, who are African-American, who walk the streets, uncomfortable now in our interaction with white officers. Weekly is the brother of Joseph Weekly, the officer who shot and killed Diana Jones during a 2010 raid. Well, the first funerals will be held this week for three of the police officers who were shot and killed during a protest in Dallas. Services for Brent Thompson and Senior Corporal Lorne Herons will be on Wednesday. Sergeant Michael Smith will be laid to rest on Thursday. Services for Patrick Zamaripa and Michigan native Michael Kroll are pending. Tonight, Detroit Police and Wayne County are putting together a first of its kind special victims unit. This team will solve crimes targeting the LGBT community. Mara McDonald is live at Detroit Police Headquarters. And Mara, you teased it a little bit earlier. You said FBI crime stats show LGBT people are more likely to be victims of hate crimes than any other group. Is that right? Kim, it's absolutely right. And many of those crimes never get solved. And there are various reasons for that, hopefully. And it's going to stop right now. Take a look. Amber Monroe was a trans woman murdered in Detroit last year, a crime that remains unsolved. And it's not an unusual situation. There is a fear of retaliation 
Um, so I believe that's probably part of the reason as to why people don't talk just for fear of what might happen to them. Many in the LGBT community are either afraid to speak up or worried about how they'll be treated by law enforcement. You can either sit back and complain about it or you can actually do something about it. Dana Nessel knows more than a little something about getting things done. She was the attorney that got Michigan's marriage equality issue in front of the Supreme Court. Now, the nonprofit she's spearheading, Fair Michigan, is putting money where its mouth is. Yeah, I think there's unique challenges that the LGBT community brings to uh, law enforcement and the justice system. And I think coming from within that community, having been within law enforcement and within that deep structure, there's an opportunity here to engage the community in a new and meaningful way. Vicki Yost is a former deputy chief with the DPD and now will be a special investigator assigned to work with DPD and Wayne County in assisting in solving LGBT crimes. She's not alone. A special prosecutor is on board as well all paid for with Fair Michigan's nonprofit dollars. I think that we're going to have a number of cases that we're able to close and successfully solve and prosecute that possibly would have otherwise remained cold um, indefinitely. Back here live, Chief Craig and Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy are about to announce the Fair Michigan Justice Project. Tomorrow morning, we're live at DPD headquarters. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, thank you, Mara. Well, most people go swimming in their bathing suit. This man went in his birthday suit. The story behind this bizarre video at a popular park. A waiter leaves his customers behind and storms out of the restaurant, but for good reason. Why he's being called a hero. First, they're sandwiched between their children and their parents. I picture a club sandwich. You've got bread on each end and a slice of bread in the middle. It is a growing trend for families. See how they're coping with their reality. Crisis. I just have to kind of go wherever the need is. They're caring for their children and their parents. A generation balancing caregiving for everyone else and still taking time for themselves. Well, they're called the sandwich generation in their 30s and 40s, responsible for raising their kids and caring for their aging parents. And as baby boomers continue to age, more families are taking on multiple layers of caregiving. Talk about not taking anything for granted. This is how 84-year-old Charlotte Cutler and her 81-year-old sister Doris Benedini honor their lives, one moment at a time. I didn't think that I'd ever get like that. I just think <laughs> I'd ever not remember something that's important yeah. and now I have to write everything down and then remember where I put it. <laughs> and then <laughs> you got a write double it. whammy. <laughs> Charlotte's daughter Anne Marie never seems to stop. If she's not caring for her parents and her aunt, it's her full time job. And don't forget her own family. I just have to kind of go wherever the need is. You know, like if, if Doris is having a really good stable day and she's out with my mom, then that's when I might take my dad. Anne Marie isn't alone. More than 65 million Americans care for a chronically ill or aging family member during any given year. The average caregiver now is a 46 year old woman. She's had, I think, two years of education. She's full time employed. She has two kids at home, usually in high school. And Dr. Laird says the trend is getting more daunting. The number of families caring for multiple generations keeps expanding. I picture a club sandwich. You've got bread on each end and a slice of bread in the middle. The Caregiver Action Network wants caregivers to know they're not alone and offer the following advice. Seek out support from other caregivers. Take care of your own health. Accept offers of help and suggest specific tasks people can do to help. Watch for signs of depression and get professional help when you need it. Organize medical information so it's easy to find and make sure legal documents are in order. As a caregiver, you really have to stop and sort of take time for yourself. Um, a phrase I use often is take your oxygen first. Anne Marie's daughter helps her mom. They've hired someone to take over for them on the weekends so they can focus on the positive. Remember that the time may not be there for so much longer and just really think about the quality of the time and then the little things don't really matter anymore. You're terrific kids. We're blessed. Yeah, we sure are. I just wish they were mine. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm not giving them up. I know. There you go. <laughs> mm, it's 
here. It's tough, though, it, it during really that time is. Period. And I don't want to make it sound like it's just people that have families. There are plenty of single people, mm -hmm. people that are not, you know. And that's even more stressful sometimes it, because you may exactly. not have that infrastructure or maybe a brother or sister to help you. Exactly. So, oh. yeah, it's tough. Well, now here's a look at what I'm working on for tomorrow night. They're making money doing what they love. Thank you. Okay, hold that. No idea is too small not to be able to take it to another level and grow it. We are bootstrappers. Defining success for themselves. I am much happier with how things are going right now. Yet some think what they're doing is just a hobby. I think there's a stigma. Tomorrow at 11, meet a group in Metro Detroit whose businesses are booming on their own terms. Okay. That is back. It was a gorgeous night out there. I had the opportunity to walk downtown mm -hmm. for a little bite to eat. But it's going to get steamy, you said. It is. <laughs> I mean, 90 degree temperatures are one thing, but when you factor in the humidity, humidity. coming with it. It's dangerous. It is, uh, it's going to be uh, tough to handle in the next couple days. Showing you the dew points right now, the reason we look at this, anytime these numbers get over the mid-60s, that's what we classify as muggy. That's pretty much what's on top of us right now with that 66 degree number. But look at all the 70s out here to the west. It's all headed in our direction. So when the temperatures go up tomorrow, humidity is going to increase as well. I don't think that we'll quite get there. That's 77 in Sioux Falls. That's stuff you only see down in the swamps of uh, Mississippi and Florida. It's just incredibly oppressive humidity. 76 is where we're at right now. That's the thermometer reading. Not much of a breeze out there to stir things up either. It's out of the southeast at six miles an hour. Uh, Brenda's doing this right. She's got two comfy chairs. She's got a pool behind her. She's got a cold beverage and a sweet koozie. It goes right around that. So I give her an A plus for surviving the heat. Uh, appreciate that storm pin and I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more. Not only people enjoying the, the warm temperatures, but also possibly some thunderstorms in their offing in the next few days. Nothing out there right now, uh, at least in our part of the uh, uh, state southern end. There are some just rolling into the UP right now, but our chance is going to be coming tomorrow late, probably about sunset. We'll start seeing a few thunderstorms form as this warm front lifts north and allows more of that humidity to build. This one's going to be a fairly scattered round. A lot of factors working against thunderstorm development tomorrow, so I don't think everybody's going to see them, but couple of those could be out there. Much better chance is going to be on Wednesday, and that one's also going to be an earlier shot, too. We'll likely see those pop right in the heat of the afternoon, so 3, 4 o'clock. We'll start looking for those thunderstorms to form on Wednesday, and those, I think, have a better chance of actually becoming strong or potentially severe, so the stronger the two storms coming in on Wednesday. 70 degrees tonight, warm and Definitely muggy, uh, especially by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. There's that 90 degree finish tomorrow and we'll do it all over again on Wednesday. That's before temperatures start getting cooler. As we get into Thursday, cold front comes through about midday is going to shut off our rain chances Thursday. Everything after that looks pretty good. Temperatures close to average, low humidity, plenty of sunshine. Great weekend ahead. Looking forward to it. Just got to get through the next few days. Yeah, thanks, right. Ben. Well, it is a dirty secret many of us keep from our doctors, what we're hoarding in our medicine cabinets that could actually make us sick. And he probably deserves more than a 20% tip, how a waiter stopped a robbery. That's next. This is a... A waiter dashes across a Washington, D.C. street to stop a mugger from robbing an elderly man at gunpoint. Cell phone video shows the robber on top of the victim. Seconds later, the waiter runs over, kicks the robber, wrestles him for that weapon. Unfortunately, the mugger did get away with the wallet, but thankfully, no one was hurt. Researchers are sending out a warning. Self-diagnosing your sore throat and overusing antibiotics is dangerous. A Baylor College of Medicine study says one in 20 adults have hoarded medications previously prescribed to them and used them without a doctor's guidance later for other sicknesses. But health experts say old antibiotics can cause Ill illnesses, so it's best to throw those medications out and get new ones prescribed. Well, parents and kids walking into the Houston Zoo witnessed a hectic scene when a man stripped naked and started swimming in a lake. Yeah, pretty hectic. He swam around for about two hours. When police and firefighters tried to convince him to get out, he started yelling at them. I'm gone. You can't figure out what my name is. 
burn in hell anyway. Because I already told you enough times, there are too many languages. Well, Cruz used a boat to push him towards the shore, and then Houston police grabbed him and took him away. What were you doing in Houston? Oh, I knew <laughs> it. <laughs> you are good. You're, You're very good. It.